How's it going and welcome back to the channel and yet another Creation Club mod review and this time it's the turn of the Vigil Enforcer armour set and as usual I won't be doing the walkthrough on the quest but just a quick overview and we'll see exactly what we can do with this mod and again as usual we'll take it out for a test drive and I'll give my thoughts right at the end. So let's crack on. This mod was made by Matty743 and the quest was created by Chris Takahashi. I think that's how you pronounce it and if I got it wrong I do apologise. Uh, Matty has a host of other armour mods available on Nexus uh, including one of the armour sets my current character is using. So go check them out, they're pretty cool. And Chris Takahashi created the brilliant, interesting NPCs mod. Again, go check that out. Uh, Vigil Enforcer Armour Set is a creation that simply adds four sets of heavy armour used by the Vigil of Stendhal and it's sold for 600 credits which is $6 or around £5 in real money. Okay, so how to get your mitts on these little lovelies. Upon installation, the Quest Unholy Vigil will be added to your journal and will direct you to the Hall of the Vigilant where you will discover that the Vigilant's Stendhal have recently been disappearing whilst on patrol in the Pale. You will need to journey to Dawnstar and investigate three suspicious individuals to uncover the source of these killings. Your search will ultimately lead you to a hidden chamber within Quicksilver Mine containing an altar dedicated to our old friend Molag Bao. Though sure, it's quite a decent little quest and it's a nice change from the generic ones coming out with most of the Creation Club mods. Anyway, once you've done what needs to be done, you will have a full set of the following. Vigil Corrupted Armour, Vigil Enforcer Armour, Vigil Veteran Armour and Vigil Silver Hand Armour. So let's take a look at what we've got. You'll notice the Vigil Enforcer and Vigil Veteran sets are visually identical. Once a quest is completed you will also be able to craft all of these armour types at a forge provided you have the Steel Smithing perk. All the armours have exactly the same stats except the clothes helmets offer a further two points on the armour rating so 97 and 99 respectively and it's worth noting that I have exactly zero perks or XP in heavy armour. Okay, as mentioned before, once you've completed the quest, we can smith each set of armour as long as you have the steel smithing perk. So let's go and see what we can do with this stuff. Before we start, I have to say everything is fully enchantable as nothing comes enchanted. And as far as I can tell right now, there's no inherent effects built into this armour. And we're all at different stages in our smithing and alchemy development, so these are just what I'm getting with my gear and serves as an example for comparison purposes. We'll all get different mileage out of our smithing gear and potions. A few things can also be added by smithing. One is you can add a sashed version of the armour to the corrupted and veteran versions. It doesn't add anything apart from aesthetics though. And you can also add an open helmet to the corrupted set and a closed helmet to the veteran version. So we smithed and upgraded everything 
let's take a look at what we've managed to get out of these and I'll start with indiv individual pieces but not for every set as they're all the same and then we'll look at the total armor stats again I'll reiterate that I have absolutely no XP or perks in heavy armor and this shows how valuable alchemy and enchanting uh, are you can max out the armor cap just using these and put those valuable perks elsewhere Anyway, starting with the open helmet, which has a base armor of 20 and a weight of 5, and it's been improved up to 160. The closed helmet, which has a base armor of 22 and a weight of 6, and that's been improved up to 162. It's interesting that the two extra armor points haven't been affected by the upgrade multiplier, and it's still at 2. Now the armor itself has a base of 45 and a weight of 38 and it's been improved to 326 which is not bad. The boots come out with a base armor of 16 and a weight of 9 and improved to 156. And finally, the gauntlets come in with a base armor of 16, uh, a weight of 6, and I've managed to improve them to 156 armor rating. So let's take a look at the overall armor ratings. Completely unmodified, these armor sets have an armor rating of 97 with an open helmet and 99 with the closed helmet. But this demonstrates how good these armor sets are, especially when you compare them to other top tier vanilla armors, such as Daedric armor, which comes in, uh, comes in at 108, Storm armor comes in 102, Dragon Plate armor again is 102, and Ebony armor comes in at 96. Now this armor is absolutely excellent, coming in above Ebony and not far off the Storm Dragon Plate and Daedric, and it only requires the Steel Smithing perk. And when we see the improved armor coming at 798 with the open helmet and 800 with the closed, we are by far exceeding the armor cap anyway. And it allows us to free up some perks in heavy armor and smithing to put elsewhere. Though this is dependent on gaining high alchemy skills for your smithing potions and high enchanting levels for your alchemy and smithing gear. Okay, so we've now upgraded this lot. Let's take them for a test run and I'll give my thoughts on this mod. I think these armor sets are decent enough. They look fine and it's always good to have more choices. However, I have several issues starting with the price point. Five pound for an armor set. Are these designs and textures of, of these sets worth five pounds? No, I don't think so. You have four so-called armor sets and yet they all look incredibly similar. The textures are okay, they're fine actually, but they're definitely not £5 worth. Hell, you can buy the Hearthfire DLC for £3.49 on Steam. I know it includes part of SE, but as a direct comparison it really shines a light on mod values. Throw in the fact there's no light armour version, which immediately removes its usefulness to a large part of the player base straight away, it could well have been redeemed with some special weapons, etc., but none were included. I would say probably if it was, say, 100 or 200 credits, I could probably recommend it as a decent bunch of armor sets. But I just can't see the value of this mod. I really can't at this price point. I don't like to be critical, critical of mods because I understand the work that goes into them. But sometimes I just have to, and this is a case in point. And not the mod itself, just this mod at this price. Anyway, any review is subjective, and these are simply my views. But what really counts is what you feel, and I hope I've given you enough information to make an informed decision whether this mod is worth buying or not for you. I hope you enjoyed the vid, guys. Catch you later. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, leave a comment and hit the bell next to the subscribe button after you subscribed obviously. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. See you later.